represented on the screen there are four primary components we're going to talk about as they relate to FISMA. We're going to talk about some of the core requirements. We're going to talk about the FISMA risk management framework. We're going to talk about why we need FISMA. And then we're going to talk about how many businesses are actually impacted by what FISMA does. So let's go ahead and start with the core components here. Our core components here illustrated on the screen are grouped into three primary areas for us. These first three here, inventory, priority assessment, and categorize the system and data, these are all part of FIPS 199. And this basically collects the information about the environment, what hardware you have, and more importantly, what services you're going to have, as well as what level of security do you require for your data. And so when you put all of those together, they develop and fill in this FIPS 199 form, and it tells us where the low benchmark is. So for example, if you're looking at an application and you have all of the areas, remember there's low, moderate, or high in FISMA, so all of them are, require low except for one that requires moderate security, and you tell the difference between low, moderate, and high by looking at the 800-53 controls and seeing what exactly low, moderate, and high does. So let's say that back to the example, you have one moderate, then the entire system has to be FISMA moderate. So that's kind of how that works. The next section are the controls themselves, the NIST controls themselves. And this section allows us to develop and determine the risk to operations. We're going to talk more about this in continuous monitoring. We're going to talk about the development of new controls, of legacy, of controls to manage the legacy environment and to customize these controls to the customer's environment. So the initial set of security controls outlined in NIST 800-53 are the security controls that we use as a core component of a FISMA low, moderate, or high. So if you've heard this word NIST, just know that NIST is kind of that core foundation, those security controls, two to three hundred of them typically in a FISMA moderate, that allow you to get that authority to operate. And then the third area here uh, within this core components is monitor. And monitor is relatively new, introduced in 2012 to the NIST control sets. And it basically says, I want to have continuous monitoring, change management, and reporting so that I know as an authority, one who gives authority to a federal agency to operate, put their services online and their data at risk, I want to know that those environments that I set up here under the initial controls and that I prioritize here during my uh, FIPS analysis and assessment phase, that they're all still being protected. So the continuous monitoring is a key new component, but very important in the FISMA uh, business. So let's go ahead and look at this risk management framework for a moment. FISMA has what they call a risk management uh, framework, and we're not going to go into all of them. We have talked a little bit about some of them, FIPS 199, 800-53, 800-37. And so these are some of those core components that make up the risk management framework, security categorization, <laughs> security control selection, et cetera, assessment, implementation, documentation, um, continuous monitoring, things of that nature. So that's the risk management framework. And it's important when you talk to others about FISMA or you are trying to learn about FISMA that you understand what the risk management framework is. So how does this impact business? So let's go ahead and take a look here at the way it actually impacts our businesses all over the globe. This is a international standard that we have and although we see it a lot in the public space in the United States, this is somewhat international. So what, what does this mean, the business impact? Well, it requires all networks to do due diligence and absolutely ensure that they are secure in diverse environments. And the areas of our society that are impacted and those other type of certifications leverage the same NIST controls that we're talking about for FISMA. So for example, common criteria, uh, NIST, uh, CMS, uh, HIPAA, 
All of these use components of the NIST 800-53 security control sets. So as you develop a solution that's FISMA, there's a lot of transferability between the control sets that you're building for FISMA into these other standards as well. All right. And so the last area that we're going to just talk about real quick is why FISMA. So a lot of times we're seeing FISMA implemented in environments today simply because they want more security, better incident and change management, and a reduction of cost. So as we implement these control sets in our environments, we absolutely ensure that that environment is highly available and that it's continually being monitored for security threats and things of that nature. Following a FISMA analysis and a FISMA certification means that your system, whatever that system is that you're implementing, is much better as a result of the work you have applied because you've gone through in painful detail sometimes about exactly what you do when a certain occurrence happens within your environment. So that's all. Uh, thank you for joining us today to talk a little bit about FISMA and how it works in your environments.